Can you believe that bullshit? Ugh. So the Jaguars just traveled west to play the Arizona Cardinals. Not only the Arizona Cardinals, but the Blaine Gabbert-led, Byron Lethwich, Lethwich coaching, Arizona Cardinals. And we go out there and lose. We lose out in the desert. Jaguars had an opportunity to move on to 8-3, and three, but we are now 7-4. and four. And now we're tied for first place in the AFC South. And given the tiebreaker, we're now in the wild card spot. And what a blown game by the Jaguars. I mean, we look bad on every side of the ball. The offense sucked. The defense even sucked. Special teams sucked. Coaching sucked. It was all just terrible. And I'm going to go ahead and take it to the end of the game. I don't know what the hell Doug Marone was doing. Like, from, from the point where the Jaguars got the ball with like a minute 14 left in the game... To the time Dawson kicked a game-winning field goal. That's all coaching right there. I mean, we were all sitting there wondering, okay, what are the Jaguars going to do? One, 16 left in the game. Are they going to try to, you know, try to get a touch, not a touchdown, but a field goal opportunity to try to win this game of regulation? And then he decides to basically do a running back draw. And then we're like, okay, looks like Doug Marone's going to play to overtime. And then at second down, for whatever even reason, we decide to pass the ball on a little slant play. And granted, it should have been caught, but it was incomplete. And all of a sudden, you, you stop the clock, and then you're sitting there like, what the hell are we doing? Like, we punt the ball and give Blaine Gabbard the ball with like 16 seconds left. And what do you? what's the one thing you don't do? You don't allow sideline passes. And they let up two of them. Two of them. You get in the middle of the field so you can... Tackle him down, and then this time runs out because they had no timeouts. And then this old man comes out there, old man Rivers coming out there kicking 57-yard game-winning kicks. I mean, holy shit, guys. Like, it was awful. And the whole game plan, you know what I mean? Leonard Fournette, he has like 10 rushes for like 25 yards. Let's see. We had a total between our three running backs, Leonard Fournette, Ivory Yeldon, 29 yards rushing. They stopped our run game, and then it completely exposes our offense. You know what I mean? Like, Bortles, we all know Bortles isn't good. You know what I mean? He goes out there and does Blake Bortles stuff. He wasn't very good in the passing game. The only good thing about our offense was literally Bortles running the ball. He had 65 yards rushing and two touchdowns, which far exceeding, exceeded any other part of our run game. And it was just terrible. You know what I mean? We had the ball also... Uh, with a chance to basically kick a not a game-winning field goal, but kick a field goal, be up three, and then basically flip the field, you know, hopefully get a touchback and have them try to win it. But Blake Bortles just telegraphs a pass to Tyron Matthew, the Honey Badger, and it was just it was just a terrible game. I mean, the defense didn't even do that well. Uh, you know, the defense they had that one real big spark play where Yannick Ngakwe got another strip sack and uh, Campbell recovered it for a touchdown. But other than that, the defense basically allowed Blaine Gabbard to go for 20 yards, and including a essentially a game-winning drive. It was just absolutely terrible. And the thing about it is, I know a lot of people are going to say, you know, Blake's done, like, we need to move on from Blake. There's really nobody to turn to. The only player we got to turn to is Chad Henney, because we're not going to go out and sign another quarterback, you know what I mean? Like, there's no quarterback out there that's going to come here with five weeks left in the regular season, all of a sudden resurrect this team. So with the quarterback thing, we're going to have to wait till March to do any of that. So, I mean, I'll obviously discuss more about where I feel we should move the quarterback in the offseason. But for now, Blake is our guy. And, you know, Blake's legs was really the only thing that worked out for us on offense. I mean, you know, he had a lot of bad throws. And, you know, granted, a lot of his throws that he was, like, making were contested. But our wide receivers need to start making some plays on the ball. You know, I saw two deep passes to Keelan Cole that could have been caught. I saw a sideline pass to Yeldon that could have been caught. If I'm picky, you could say D.D. Westbrook maybe should have caught that one ball, but it would have been an amazing catch along the sideline. So I'm not really going to put that on him. But when it all comes down to it, you need somebody to make a play. And nobody on our offense was stepping up and doing anything. Um, you know, Patrick Peterson was shutting down Marquis Lee the whole game. Uh, Keelan Cole... He had a pretty, he had one pretty good catch and run, but he just needs to start catching some damn balls. You know what I mean? Like we need a playmaker, someone be out there and make a damn play. Our rush game was shut down, so it had to be somebody in a pass game. And 
you saw the offensive game plan com completely switch like in the second half. I mean, the first half they tried to establish a run with Fournette. Nothing was getting going. And then in the second half, you saw a lot more of like Bortles running. And then you saw a lot more TJ Yellen out there. They were doing a lot more zone scheme type runs. Uh, trying to get uh, Yellen to go out there and try to make something happen. But, you know, Ivory goes in there. He fumbles the ball. I think, only, I think he only got like one or two carries this game. That was just absolutely pitiful. And, like, we were lucky that didn't go for a touchdown. But, I mean, Doug Marone, that just the coaching at the end of the game was terrible. It, like, I just don't understand what the logic of passing on second down when you're pretty much conceding, uh, you know, a tie at the end of the game and go to overtime. But of any quarterback this this year, Blaine Gabbert was by far the most effective on our defense. You saw him uh, picking apart, you know, our defense was playing a lot of zone coverage, and you just saw him really finding the soft spot, giving it to the, you know, tight ends within, like, the front part of the zone. And it was really reminiscent of our 2015-2016 Jaguars defenses where uh, just our zone coverage schemes were just allowing a lot of tight, end, tight ends to make plays on us. But it was just a completely blown opportunity. You can't, like, Bortles can't make that interception of Tyron Matthew when we're literally in field goal range. I mean, it was one of those plays where it was like, okay, as long as we don't turn the ball over, we should, should hopefully have three points. We don't even get a chance to tie it up and, or not tie it up, we don't get a chance to get a three-point lead. And then we just completely embarrass ourselves against our two former first-round quarterback picks. Just, like, we, we have to be better than this. I mean, we're a team that, you know, wants to play in the playoffs to go deep in the playoffs, but... If you shut down our run game, it's going to be really hard. It's going to be really hard to like win anything and move the ball on offense when, you know, what going into this game was the number one rushing team in the NFL, um, you know, goes in there, doesn't do anything. I mean, there were some like good spots on our team, like mainly from the defensive side. Uh, Jalen Ramsey was pretty much shutting down Larry Fitzgerald. Yannick Ngakwe, of course, with the strip sack. Uh, Barry Church got an interception, but... It was just, I mean, there were a lot of opportunities that were just, like, squandered. Like, A.J. Boye misses a interception. You have Malik Jackson basically stripping a fumble, but there was some kind of illegal contact with Dante Fowler. And, the, you know, rushing the passer, getting in the hands of the dude. And it just wasn't, I mean, this whole game, you pretty, like, I never had a good feeling that we really had any grasp of this game, even when we were leading the game. I mean, it just seemed like domination. Uh, for, uh, Adrian Peterson gets about 75 yards rushing on us. Blaine Gabbert like picked apart, you know what sh what is like the number one defense in the NFL. I mean, I'm not gonna all of a sudden discredit us for our how good our defense is, but it just it wasn't a good game. Our team sucked. Like our coaching staff, we got completely out coached, and uh, yeah, I mean, just it sucks. You know what I mean? It really sucks that. You know, a quarterback just isn't playing good. No run game. Defense wasn't, just didn't seem like it itself. And, you know, I don't know, I don't know much what else to say. Uh, we have the Colts coming up at home next week. Uh, we currently sit at 7-4, and four, tied for first place in the AFC South. Although, we are losing the tiebreaker just because of the head-to-head -to, -head to the Titans. And, uh, you know, we got... You know, definitely have to take over this next game against the Colts. It's going to be a home game, so hopefully we bring that energy and uh, hopefully we can get the W because we also have Seattle and the Titans coming up on our schedule. So um, the Jaguars, we just aren't good going to the West Coast. We lost another one. It just seemed like it just seemed like the defense. I'm mean, a little disappointed in the defense. Uh, it just they just didn't seem to be playing all that inspired, and we got dominated on pretty much all sides of the ball. So. Uh, not much else to say about that. This is UCF Jaguar, and I'm out.